I just uploaded a video recently about FSR 3.0 and frame generation and why for AMD this is just a problem that continues with their graphics cards. Now I noticed a couple comments on this video and a video I also made recently on ray tracing that I really want to dig into in this. So this is sort of a follow up to both of those videos. In the end of things you make a lot of sacrifices to use ray tracing so you should just use an AMD card. Why would you buy AMD? because it's like 30 to 40% cheaper for the same performance. When you dig even deeper, whenever Daniel Owen recommends graphics cards for value, he always recommends AMD. However, um, AMD is coming in with the RX 6600 at $230, so less than both of those, and it's extremely competitive. The 6600 is better than the 3050 um, in gaming, and it's very competitive with the ARC A750 and has more mature software support. Intel only compared their new graphics cards to NVIDIA because they knew that AMD was really good value and they couldn't compete in that space. Unfortunately for Intel, who's trying to position themselves as the scrappy underdog undercutting NVIDIA's monopolistic pricing, we already have scrappy underdog at home. It's AMD. And the end of all the ARC reviews, AMD got the biggest recommendation out of anyone. I completely agree with all these recommendations. AMD graphics cards are a really good buy right now. They're a great value, but nobody buys them. When you look at the Steam hardware survey, only 15% of people have AMD graphics cards. And four to 5% of this is just integrated graphics. When you're comparing it to Nvidia, Nvidia doesn't even have integrated graphics. If they did, they'd probably be rolling. This isn't to offend anyone. Whatever GPU you have, it's okay. Okay, you buy your own stuff and you're free to do whatever you want with your money. Buy Nvidia if you want. You're buying into the majority, but buy into Nvidia. You can buy into AMD. It is important to note, when you talk about the majority of gamers, people getting into PC gaming, especially from a value perspective, most people get recommended things or they see the first things that are available. Nvidia has an upfront advantage of just brand recognition. Now that that is a simple concept to understand, but when you when when people tell you about graphics card, they they talk about Nvidia first as the standard, and then they talk about AMD as kind of another option. Most people that are in PC gaming aren't as educated and nerdy as a lot of us, and they know, oh, I can either get a current gen Nvidia card or I get an older gen Nvidia card, and they they're barely even aware that AMD is a concept. And if they are aware that they're a concept, they have viewed them because their cards are cheaper, as second it's really hard to break that mold especially because most people think of amd as that brand to have bad drivers have driver issues all the time now this isn't true uh, especially in the past few years amd has really worked on their drivers and they're very stable they have about the same amount of issues as nvidia drivers do as for display drivers i know people like to rag on amd here and maybe rightfully so in some instances but the truth is as of late nvidia has had just as many driver related issues and the GeForce experience is kind of garbage, not least of all because you need an account to log in. The interface is now very old, it's in desperate need of an overhaul, and features for stuff like Shadowplay are severely lacking when compared to Radeon Relive. So if you're arguing that Nvidia has perfect drivers, then AMD is a close second. Now I haven't experienced this myself, but I am willing to go off the recommendations of other people. Drivers shouldn't be an issue at this day and age. But again, hard to break that mold, hard to break that stigma that people have about AMD. I talked about this before, but AMD is always late to their technologies. And I, if you want to check out that in my whole explanation of why that is the case, they're late with ray tracing, FSR, FSR3. They're late with their encoders, just a whole lot. If you want to hear that, watch the other video. But all these technologies that AMD makes are open source which I really respect them for making them open source and that a lot of people can work with their software. They can use their APIs and bring it to more games and more features and different programs. However, if you have this technology and it isn't exclusive to your brand, it doesn't give many people a reason to buy your graphics cards. Now, the way that AMD would have to fix this is actually to make a technology first. If they want to stick to their rationale, that all of their software is open source and people can work on it and it's more accessible to the public. They'd have to make some kind of technology first and beat Nvidia to the punch so that when they make their graphics cards, all of a sudden AMD 
is the brand that is in people's heads for this amazing technology that they just created. There's also this sad truth that many of us are aware of. In the past two generations of AMD graphics cards, 6,000 and the, you know, the current gen, 7,000 right now, AMD has just been matching the value of Nvidia. Now, because AMD doesn't have as much market share as Nvidia, it is a dangerous thing to match their value. RX 7900 XT, which can currently be had for $830 US, which is actually $70 below the MSRP. In fact, quite a few 7900 XTs are now selling below the MSRP. $800 is certainly a lot nicer than $900. And it does make me wonder why AMD just didn't start at that price to begin with would have made for much more favorable reviews. You can see pretty soon after launch, the 7900 XT dropped in price pretty quickly. Even with the 7900 XTX, which was the better value card that they released recently, general sentiment was that they that AMD overpromised and underdelivered on their card. It wasn't enough that people wanted to give up Nvidia. This is this is just a sad truth, guys. And AMD's here. They needed to be even less than that. They needed to be more like 900 to 800 dollars in order to make good value. They matched each other in performance pretty much. I mean, they're four frames apart. They're pretty much the same graphics card and rasterized performance, but the 4080 won an RTX. And then on top of that, you got frame generation because AMD is late on FSR3. And the RTX 4080 was about 80 watts more efficient. And the 7900 XTX wasn't a bad card. Uh, and it still is a very great card, all things considered, but didn't push people over the edge to switch to AMD like they were hoping. Back when they announced this card, it was super, super hype. So we saw here in, at 4K over the 6950 XT, it was getting across the board about 1.5 times the performance. And everyone in the GPU community uh, was taking this with a grain of salt. You know, this is marketing speak. It was probably around 1.4 times to be more accurate. When we got the actual benchmarks, the 7900 XTX was only 34% faster than the 6950 XT. All this shows is that it feels like AMD is trying to lie to us instead of being honest about their graphics cards. So they almost inflated their price like it was going to be better only to let us down when the actual numbers came in. At 1440p, the results were even worse, generally speaking. It was only 25% of 1440p. Now, these all these benchmarks that I'm showing here, these are from Hardware Boxed, so go ahead and check them out. They also said that the card only drew 355 watts, which was true, but they flexed this like it was a very good point. But as we saw, 4080 is more efficient. So this was just a non point. Come on, AMD, we just wanna trust you. Yes, you always take marketing with a grain of salt. Nvidia also completely inflates their marketing as well, especially with DLSS 3. But we saw through that pretty quickly. And then we actually saw that their performance numbers were decently accurate. It feels weird because it's almost like these two sides of Radeon just aren't talking to each other because the open source software is so transparent, but the marketing for their graphics cards aren't. Why? So people don't buy AMD graphics cards. There's not that much to really buy them for other than their price. At their price, they have great value, but nobody knows about them. And the only way that AMD is gonna get people to know about them is to build up some really, really good brand loyalty, not making a really weird marketing, overpricing and under delivering especially. I know they make more money if they price them higher at launch, but if they just price them a little bit lower, at launch, then all of a sudden, it's gonna be way more upfront value and people are gonna buy into more AMD cards just purely because of their value. Nowadays, the 6000 series is really good value from AMD, especially compared to the 3000 series from Nvidia. These cards are still relevant right now. And AMD is absolutely killing it there for value. But if AMD wants to gain some market share, they've gotta be first to some stuff and you can't just play the good guy the whole time. You can't just be the one that everybody trusts, especially because you're taking away our trust when you market your graphics cards this way. Uh, that's all I got for you guys, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll see you guys in the comments. Peace.